Weirdo Shake Tree Surgeon here with uh, another Friday episode of the weight loss journey. I don't know, wait, calling it a weight loss journey just makes it feel very yeah, cliche. I don't know really what to call it. Let's just call it my wellness journey. Anyway, my name's Josh. As of this morning, I weighed 309 pounds, actually up a couple pounds. And that's mostly because uh, the weight I lost, I lost almost 10 pounds when I did burning over 7,000 calories a day, riding my dirt bike for five days in a row. I just wanted to see what would happen. Got down to 305 pounds. A couple of those pounds came back. I don't know if that was water weight or fluctuations or whatever, but it's not weird. I expected it and I still feel like I'm on track and going in the right direction. And I'm also not going to complain about losing over 13 pounds at this point. That still feels pretty good for about a month into doing this. If you guys are new here, part of what I'm doing with this series is keeping track of what I eat, keeping track of what I put in my body, keeping myself accountable with you guys by sharing everything I do here, along with my workouts, along with everything else. Just got finished working in the garage today and filming the last little bit of an episode that we did with Shay's tattoo. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon now. I've been working since 8 a.m. I'm trying not eat till afternoon, but I'm not like waiting till right at noon. This morning was definitely hard. My body just felt very, very hungry, but I did make myself wait till afternoon anyway. I know I need to eat too, because I'm just feeling very like unmotivated. And I can tell that's just because I have no food in my body. Like I, I was doing the work and I put these shots on the Sportsters and I found myself just not wanting to do anything else in the garage, which is unlike me. I like doing stuff in the garage. I love to tinker. Definitely looking forward to putting some food in my body, eggs and bacon this morning. And then me and Cher are heading out to Forgotten Angels to pick up a van. Strength of a tiger. Morals of an alligator. We have a Florida man. All right, today's been a weird day. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Just can't quite seem to get it together. <laughs> just been trying to film some stuff, trying to make content, trying to get into the groove of things, but it has just been a completely flat, very uninspiring, very uncreative day where I haven't wanted to do a whole lot of work. That happens sometimes. That's okay. I'm okay with that. I'll live. It's fine. But it does feel kind of weird. Anyway, got to tell you guys, I'll talk a little bit more about it tomorrow, but the carnivore diet is not working for me. Um, it's something that I really wanted to try to do because so many people had told me to try it and I did. I, it's got to be something if that many people are doing it. I think it's just not for me personally. So dinner is going to be chicken thighs, asparagus, and of course, uh, broccoli. I, I'll talk more about this tomorrow because right now my mouth, brain, connection is not working super good and don't feel super talkative. Whew, back from the gym. It's about 10.55 right now. I haven't eaten yet today, and it's weird because going to the gym makes me not hungry. Like, I feel like I'm not hungry after I get home from the gym, so it's easier to do my morning fast if I work out in the morning. I think a little harder to get motivated. That's the hard part. It's harder to get motivated at, you know, 8 a.m. You know, I sat down at the computer, answered some emails, made a couple shorts, wake Shaylisi up, then we go to the gym. It's harder to get motivated without having, like, that first burst of energy in the morning. I've been mitigating that with caffeine drinks. I'm not giving up my caffeine. They're, they're, a man's gotta live, okay? If I'm giving up beer and, and sweets and like all this other stuff, a man's still gotta live. So that's harder to get motivated. But once I work out, once I actually go do the workout, I feel like I'm not even hungry for hours afterwards. I'm gonna shower, get ready for the day. Cammy Bay is coming over to film. Mike Branch is coming over to film. Diplomat hopefully is coming over to film. So we got, we got a full day today. So I'm definitely gonna have to eat something, but I'm gonna wait till I get showered, get ready and it's afternoon and then I'm going to, whether I'm hungry or not, I'm going to make myself eat something just so I can kind of cruise through the rest of the day and not eat again until dinner. I've been trying to do like two meals a day with some light snacking. Like I said, I just can't do the carnivore thing. I'm going to explain more on that later. I still haven't quite contabulated and ciphered up, divided, multiplied, and put all my thoughts in a row on it. But I got a lot of thoughts about it. And even if it is a miracle diet, I just don't think it, I just don't think it's for me for a lot of different reasons that I'm still quite haven't put into words yet. Anyway, let's... <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready for this. It's gonna be a fun day. I'm excited, man. I love hanging out with Cammy Bay, Diplomat, Uncle Bo Gator, man. Those are my people. So, well, I ain't got nothing to bitch about. We're gonna hang out, have some laughs, ride some motorcycles. Life is good. Oh. 
Okay, time to eat. I'm not super hungry, so I'm gonna try to make it fun. It's really tempting just to cook eggs and bacon again, but it's, you, you gotta switch it up, because I do that, I know myself. I know what I do is I eat the same thing over and over and over again, because it's so easy to make, and then I get bored of it, and and I just oh, go overboard. Now I just have to eat everything, and eat all this weird stuff, because I'm so used to eating the same thing. So it's not that I'm forcing myself, I do like to cook, just sometimes I don't want to take the time to do it. Now I'm just gonna make chicken and cheese omelets because I still got some leftover chicken thighs from the stuff I cooked last night and gotta use it baby that chicken's open when that chicken's open it's gotta go otherwise it turns into what we like to call diet chicken real quick that's like medium rare chicken man that stuff goes through you like a cannonball nobody wants that omelets tend to be one of those things that when people are cooking they really struggle with them everyone says how hard it is to make an omelet making an omelet isn't hard I'm gonna tell you what you're doing wrong right now one you're cooking it too fast slow down two you're putting too much crap in it put less in it too many ingredients. Everyone wants that crazy like olive, feta, tomato, you know, the whole kitchen sink of that almond. Don't do that. Two ingredients. One protein, one cheese, maybe a vegetable if you're feeling fancy. Other than that, stop and don't put too much in there. So so for an omelet for Shalisha and I, even just this one chicken thigh will probably be too much meat for those two omelets. In fact, yeah, that'll be way too much meat. I know on the ketogenic diet, which is kind of what I'm doing, you're supposed to have the fat. So maybe it's weird that I'm trimming this fat off, but there's going to be plenty of fat in there from the butter. I think I'll be just fine. This is just like with the mallet, man. That's insult to injury to this poor bird. Chicken flesh. It's what's for breakfast. Another mistake I see people make is they'll just go straight from cooking their flesh. Don't call it protein. We're calling it flesh from now on. That's what it is. I think it's an insult to the animal to just call it protein like it's some sort of pill you take. That is animal flesh. They'll go straight from cooking their flesh to cooking their eggs. Don't do that, baby. Move that pan off there. Let it cool down, man. Because uh, omelet's got to be real slow and low. Again, I'm not a cook and in any way, shape, or form. I fuck up meals all the time. This is just what works for me. I don't do nothing special with the eggs. I don't be putting water or milk, all this crazy stuff in them, man. Just egg works just fine. Less, you don't need much. It's like, you ever try to make a burrito at home and you fuck it up? I know you do. Everyone fucks up a burrito at home. It's because you're trying to put too much shit in. Even that's probably too much. Even that's probably too much stuff in that omelet. And then just chill the fuck out and wait, man. I've gotten the omelets pretty much down, uh, but uh, I still fuck up burritos. I don't think I've ever once in my life put the correct amount of stuff inside of a burrito wrap. We're still working on that one. Talking all that shit and I fucked it up anyway. Damn, man. Really like uh, killing these omelets, aren't I? Amazing. Fucking Gordon Ramsay, Gordon fucking <laughs> Gordon Ramcock over here killing it. No, no, I was just like talking all this shit about how I'm good at cooking omelets and I just like totally beefed both of them. Pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm the best, baby. I mean, I guess the ingredients are all still there, so it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't taste any different. They just say, they say you eat with your eyes first and uh, then with your mouth, but today we're just eating with our mouth. Well, there's a little bit of a gap between right now, which is Thursday, the day before this video is coming out, and the previous time that you saw in this video, the day that my hubris and chicken omelet so humbled me in the kitchen. There's a time gap, but an even bigger gap in my mood. It hasn't been the best two weeks for me, either mentally or physically. The physical part is just me fighting like this weird cold, sore throat congestion for the past few weeks. It is what it is. It's not that big of a deal, but it certainly does doesn't help, but the real killer has been it's been the mental part. Everything kind of started to unravel for me a little bit when I was trying to put into words why the carnivore diet wasn't working for me. And trust me, I really wanted it to work. There were just so many people in the comments section who were just singing its praises, saying it worked wonders for them. Like, I, I tried. I wanted it to work. And honestly, I felt great on it. My body felt good. I was just super sad. I just had this overwhelming feeling that I was slowly paring away every good thing in my life, taking away everything I liked and leaving nothing enjoyable left. I can't eat the food I want to eat. I can't drink beer. I can't go out. To, I can't go out at all because the temptation of social drinking is so high for me. I just, it, oh my gosh, really just started spiraling into a hole with it. That was part of why the carnivore diet wasn't working for me. But let me tell you, as no one is probably surprised at all, even when I brought vegetables back in my diet, that didn't 
didn't magically fix it either. I stopped filming my meals, stopped filming everything I made, which was like really the crux of what I'm doing here. You know, I stopped waking up early, huge blow, because waking up early and just getting on top of it, I think was really good for my mental health. You know, I went out, went out for one beer, just one beer, and that turned into an all night bender. As much as I love beer, you have to admit it's still a depressant. Like, you don't have to admit that, that's just the truth. The chemical depression from an alcohol hangover combined with my already kind of depressed mental state just really pushed me further down. On top of which now all I'm thinking about is how I broke my streak of not drinking or not drinking heavily. Alcohol, it's much more than just the empty calories that are bad for me with alcohol and beer. It's way more than the chemical depression that comes along the next day. And you guys who drink know what I'm talking about. Really, its biggest issue for me is the fact that I make my worst decisions with food when I'm drunk. After an all-night drinking session, I come home and, you know, you're not happy when you come home from drinking all night. You're upset that you drank all night. The physical effects of alcohol make you feel depressed. And, and I get into this mood where I think the only thing that can possibly make me happy, the only thing I can do to stave this off is to eat something. Because at least the small amount of time that I'm chewing something, those fractions of a second when I have the food in my mouth and I'm chewing it, at least I can be happy for those moments and I can forget about all the anger and the sadness that I was feeling earlier. Of course, that tiny little high from eating food only lasts as long as the food does. And once it's gone, now you have two things to feel bad about. One, the fact that you already felt bad, and two, now you feel guilty about the food too. These are all my decisions. These are my decisions, it's my fault, it's nobody else's. This is something that I did. You know, I can make excuses, I could say I've been ramping up these efforts at the Forgotten Angels raffle and that's taken up a lot of my time. We're dealing with just an absolute disaster with the USPS and a bunch of people's packages right now. Like I'm just, I'm all over the place. I'm going 100 miles an hour and, 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 and. That's just life, ain't it? That's life. That's life for everybody. Everyone's got their own responsibilities. Everyone's living their life. You know, I just, the mental state that I was in made me start to view all my responsibilities as like these nigh on insurmountable tasks that just took this just insane level of will for me to complete. And and by the way, after I do them, where's, where's my reward? Where's my praise? Why isn't someone patting me on the head and telling me I'm a good boy and giving me a reward for just doing what, what I'm supposed to do, for just doing my job, doing what I'm supposed to do every day like that but that that's that mental state you get it like why is there not a reward for all my noble labors because there isn't because that's that's just life baby this is like you just got to do it and feeling like that feeling like you should have some sort of reward that's a trap it's a trap that i was falling into i could see myself falling into it in fact i wouldn't even say that i fell into it really i like I, I jumped into it willingly i think yeah i jumped in of my own free will and admitting just admitting that you willingly jumped into a pool of self-pity that's tough man i don't know if that's easy for you but that's a tough thing to admit for me so these past two weeks i've just spent like like bouncing back and forth between doing my best to eat properly, still exercise, and just be healthier, live a healthier lifestyle, and just absolutely wanting to give up and go directly back to everything I was doing before. That's that overwhelming urge, that little trick your brain plays on you that says, okay, well, you know, you've already slid back a little bit. You've already gone back a little bit. Like, you don't want to have to cover that same ground again. You might as well just go directly back to that. Come on, slide all the way down, at least down there, at least down there you can enjoy yourself a little bit. It's like I was bargaining with myself, just making cases and arguing to, to, to go back to the same overeating, over drinking, very unhealthy lifestyle that I was living before. It's also just another trap, man. That's junkie mentality. Just arguing against doing the right thing or doing the hard thing and letting yourself slide back into bad behavior. But knowing it's junkie mentality, that doesn't always make it easier to deal with. If knowing exactly what you were doing wrong and why solved all the problems, like I wouldn't have any problems at all. I know a lot of you who are watching right now, I know that you've been there. I know you've been there because I've been here before. Before. I have been right at this moment. This is just like right here. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten up to this point. I've been exactly in this moment on previous weight loss attempts and guess what? This is where I gave up, right here. And this is where I've given up a lot of times. It's the first fall the first fuck up, just like that first sign of rough waters and all I want to do is go running back to the comforts of food and drink. It is intensely frustrating, but I, 
I cannot let myself fall again. When my head is clear and I'm trying to convince myself I didn't slide that far back, I don't have to regain that much ground. I mean, I look at the scale and I go, hey man, I didn't gain a pound. I'm exactly where I was. And still, I, I, I even use that as an excuse. I'm like, hey, look, I just was like, uh, I did some drinking, I ate whatever I wanted a few days and I didn't gain any weight. Look, it's fine. I can, I can go back to that and hey, at least I lost 20 pounds. You know, that's pretty good. I lost my 20 pounds and that's cool. Lost 20 pounds. Let's go back to eating and drinking, man. Let's go back to just good time, Charlie, baby. It's another trap. It's another lie. It's junky mentality. And when you lie to yourself, and trust me, everyone does some amount of lying to themselves. That is the most dangerous thing in the world. There's one thing I've been holding on to, just a few simple words of advice and support from David Tyler, who's been and just an amazing mentor to me. He said, it's easy to never make a mistake. It's easy to not fall into temptation. When you never stray from the path, when you never stumble, those are the easiest times you'll ever, ever have. He says the true measure of your will, the true measure of a man, it's never weighed while you're walking that perfect, shining, straight, and narrow path without even looking off to the side. You can only find out what you're made of when you fail. You can only truly know who you are when you stumble. Being perfect is easy. You're up on plane. You're just going. Coming back from failure, clawing your way back from stumbling and falling down. That is what takes true grit and determination. And that's where you find out who you are. So here I am, I'm coming back from my first failure because this is a first failure that I've experienced many, many, many times. It's that point where I just turn around and say, hey, yeah, maybe next week. And man, next week that usually turns into next month. And all of a sudden next month turns into next year. And next year, that's awful close to never. I have gotten hundreds, if not thousands of comments, messages, words of support, and just a lot of people out there who watch these videos who said that you are joining me on this journey. And I wanna tell you something right now. If you've experienced your first failure, and I know some of you have, if you've hit your first stumbling block, a lot of you have. If you're there and you're at that point where you just wanna turn around because you failed, you've fallen, you don't wanna to have to recover that ground, you don't wanna to have to go through the agony of starting again, get back up and try again and use every single fiber of your being to claw your way in the right direction because that is where you'll make it. That's how you make it. When everything's fine and everything's perfect and you're doing everything you should and eating what you should and losing weight, that's easy. Where you're really gonna tell who you are, where I'm really figuring out just who the hell I am, is when I'm clawing my way back from falling down. That's gonna about do it for this one. I appreciate you guys sticking along with me for this, and we'll see you next Friday. Until next time, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.